My name is Ini Archibong. I'm a recent graduate from the ICAL in Lausanne, Switzerland. I'm originally from Los Angeles, California, Pasadena to be exact. And um, before I start, I want to thank uh, my fellow speakers. And I've probably rewritten and rearranged the slides for my presentation so many times. And uh, being with these fellow speakers has um, not only inspired me, but they've also given me quite a bit of support and given me the encouragement that I needed to have the courage to talk about what I'm going to talk about today. There was a point um, not too long ago where I didn't want to be alive. And I remember sitting on the side of the road in my car and I just started writing. And um, I started writing about the darkness and I didn't stop until I had written my way out of it, um, essentially. And during that, during that time, I came to a realization that my darkness came from living a life that wasn't in line with a uh, higher purpose. And that um, I, didn't, I wasn't living as if I believed the truth that I felt inside that somehow I was a, a hero. Um, I had, you know, a very spiritual upbringing and... You know, along with that, I, you know, was very into fantasy books and things of, the, of that nature that, you know, give you the inspiration and point toward the fact that there's a higher calling for all of us. And I developed what I call a personal mythology. You know, for me, when I talk about a personal, personal mythology, uh, I'm talking about, you know, an amalgamation of all of the stories and all of the influences and all the things that I've had that were indications that pointed me to a deeper dimension or a higher truth or something that's beyond that I could tap into to really use the skills and the gifts that I was born with to benefit everyone and everything. So there came a point um, when I graduated from ECAL where, you know, I wanted to present myself essentially to the world um, as a creative and I needed to try to distill, you know, all of these things that I'd come to believe into uh, a project. And I call that project In the Secret Garden. Um, you know, it's, it started with a metaphor. And, you know, the garden in fantasy literature and, you know, in different spiritual traditions represents a place of the unknown where anything can happen and the normal rules of this reality don't really apply. And for me, this secret garden, my secret garden, is a layer that exists above reality where... I can escape to and uh, find the inspiration to create the things that I feel could somehow represent in themselves objects that, that are representations of this mythology. So when I started on the project, you know, it wasn't the typical design process that I was used to. Um, I went back to writing. So I tried to describe what this secret garden looks like. Fragments of our waking life magnified and enlivened with the richness, the substance of dreams. Crystal flowers frozen in bloom, dripping stalactites from the frosty marbled sky. In the garden, we find flat-headed fungi atop liquid-lined legs, precarious substance held by tension of sur surface alone. While soft billowing clouds of ground reveal an impish smile and winking eyes as they vanish, a camouflage of floral feline striping, dream or nightmare alike, the unfamiliar guide us on a journey through the unknown to be awakened as the heroes that we once knew we were. Once I had uh, kind of visualized what this garden would look like, um, you know, I went about the process of creating the objects that would populate the garden and with the hope that each of these objects would carry the meaning that, that I put into them and maybe translate that to the people that experienced them. So I went on to you know, have layers of inspiration that went into each of the projects that um, were metaphors that pointed toward this spiritual dimension. So with the Jadis lighting sculpture, uh, this product is a metaphor for hope. When I was young, I grew up reading a lot of fantasy books and the Narnia, um, the Chronicles of Narnia was really strong for me. There's a character named Jadis who is the Snow Queen that plunged the inhabitants of Narnia into eternal winter and during her reign of terror, there was very little hope and no end in sight. When I went about creating this product, um, 
I really wanted to give the feeling of, of flowers blooming from the snow of the winter. So with the marble canopy and working with a glass craftsman, um, creating something that would be vibrant and alive and would represent the hope that no matter how deep or dark or long the winter is, there's always hope. There's always spring right around the corner. The Galilee coffee table drew its inspiration from my childhood in the church. Um, for me, growing up, Jesus was like a superhero. And, um, you know, there was all of the feats in the parables, and one that stood out is Jesus walking on the water. But for me, what stood out wasn't the miracle of Jesus walking on water. It was actually that moment where he grabbed his disciple Peter and he told him to join him. And for a split second, Peter was walking on water with Jesus until he lost his faith and he looked down and he sunk. For me, this is a reminder that to always believe in the power of oneself and that belief in self is actually a belief in the higher power and to take on the mantle of being a hero and, and fulfilling your purpose. Next was the Orion side table. This comes from my fascination with Greek mythology. Um, you know, I started studying Latin when I was about 12 and got heavily into mythology. And one of the characters that stood out for me was the character of Orion, who was a demigod. He had the power to walk on water and he was notoriously handsome, and, but he had the fatal flaw of being consumed by his ego. Um, when he had, with the power to do so much greatness and do so many good things, instead he used it to selfishly feed his ego and in the end left a trail of blood in his wake. So with this, I, I really wanted to maintain this idea of having you know, the, a tabletop with glass legs and the feeling of floating of a product that you wouldn't expect to exist on something liquid, but then also have the tint of the blood that he left behind uh, streaming through the legs. Uh, after doing this project, it opened up something new inside me as a designer. Uh, for the first time, I really tried to make tangible a lot of the things that have been floating around inside of me and um, a lot of the, the very spiritual um, background of, of, the, of what I do as a creator. And afterward, I was, you know, with this new process, I went on to create um, a new kind of product in my life. Uh, this is the Ohm table, and uh, this table is about serenity and peace that comes from still waters. And I call it Ohm because it's meant to be a physical mantra. These are the Del Sol floor lamps, and you know, this was meant to capture the feeling, the bliss that you have, you know, of uh, the sunset and distill it and almost turn it into a liquid and imagine it dropping to the ground in front of you and being frozen there. The erosion collection stands as a reminder that we are the marks of our history and the marks of time make us, you know, the beautiful creatures and objects that we are and to never hide our scars. Uh, with the totem, this is a calendar for mindfulness and, you know, this this 1.4 meter sculpture is meant to be a daily, a daily indicator and reminder that we can walk with mindfulness throughout the day because you can take one of the stones out of this sculpture and meditate on it in the morning and put the power into it that you want to and carry it with you throughout the day as a reminder of what you meditated on in the morning. With all of this work, uh, my goal is to be an inspiration. I don't really know if what I put into the objects actually gets transmitted to the people that interact with them. But um, what I do know is that I put the intention into it and the fact that I'm here to be able to talk about it maybe might give somebody an inspiration to try to put the same amount of spiritual effort into the products that they create. And in the end, my goal is to inspire people to believe in themselves as heroes as well, because I think that we are all born heroes. Thank you.